she's just had her afternoon feed and she's loves the dogs she wants to play with them <laughs> and she's very tame she's very gorgeous Nick, is this it? it's a really drizzly day so the camera might be a bit spotty mm -hmm. Shit. So she has connected with with uh, Clara and Lucy, and they're her aunties now, and they're so gorgeous. They think and they love this camera, so I'll probably have to do like this. Uh, the sheep, they think that she is a weather or a, a, a ram. So, so they love her very much. <laughs> and she's gotten to love them. So when I take her for a little walk, this is Stuart. When I take her for a walk on, on a leash on the road to make her really good at it, this is Stuart. Uh, they call for her. So here they are. Beautiful little big fat sheep. So um, it is just so fascinating to see how animals, as I was saying on the other video about uh, about how they connect with each other. They want to be friends. They want to get on well together. So I don't know if you can see it, but she's never had so clean ears uh, because Mary. <laughs> This is it. <laughs> Mary is licking. Mary licks their ears, so they're all they're all clean. And um, she probably feels it's like teats, so she sucks them. <laughs> so I wish I could have Mary with her mum. And um, but uh, this is all a, a great experiment for me because I've never had Dexter cows before. And the, the sad reality is that Rosie only makes, she actually hardly makes any milk. So she's making about one liter a day. I think if I didn't feed her any grain, she would probably make less than a liter a day. And I milk her twice daily. So she just is a very, very poor milker. But she's, otherwise she's just healthy and fine. But she hasn't got much condition. Uh, so she's she's not very good at adapting the feed to milk or to fat on her body and I mean I had no clue I was told by a woman who has Dexter cows that some make a lot of milk and some make hardly anything and Rosie is one of the ones <laughs> who makes hardly anything so here I have this beautiful little calf and she might have the same problem so when you have these animals you just don't know what you really <laughs> I don't know really what I'm doing but I'm I know that I'm being trained at um, connecting with them early and I can see that um, uh, you can actually take a cow you can take a calf away from the milk that early and I know they do in in I mean the big um, milking the, 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 the milking uh, cows dairy cows they only have milk for a very short time and then they have feed and they uh, well they have their problems but <laughs> but they manage so uh, the animals are very very tough and especially if they've had a good start with the milk they'll they, they uh, have a strong digest digestive system so what I'm learning now is um, is to really connect with a little cow little calf and to uh, to make them very much, um, very much like a pet, and uh, to really, um, I think this is what what happened when when mankind tamed the cows, because um, of course they found out that if they catch if they caught a calf, and could get hold of some milk for it, and look after it, uh, they could actually train them, of course, train them from the very beginning. Uh, to become very, very easy to handle animals. That's a suit. That's a suit, yeah. That's a So, uh, 
and it just goes to show just like these <laughs> we're all one herd here one flirt of sheep and, and calf um, it is so fascinating because the, they say we use a very small percentage of our brain and and that just uh, is a very fantastic thing and it, it means that we can adapt and we can change we can learn new things uh, to survive so this calf has that's so sweet it's so sweet it was so sweet this calf has learned that she has to accept that now she hasn't got a, a mother but she has these aunties <laughs> these two probably going to come over these two aunties here uh, and that's fine and as long as they're together see that the whole herd thing they're happy <laughs> that's so cute so they actually uh, it's just is fascinating so I don't know what's going to happen but um, I, I drink a lot of milk or have a lot of milk because I'm in this healing process and a cow who only makes one one liter a day is a bit of a problem <laughs> so I really do hope that that Fiona will make more milk and uh, and also having a Dexter cow who makes one liter a day do you want to breed uh, her I mean uh, because you, if you want to make a Dexy cow, a, a mixture between Dexters and... It's so, so, so cute. It's so cute. You're so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> so cute. Uh, if you want to make a mixture, a good milking cow, uh, that's a mixture between a Dexter and a Jersey, you want a good milking Dexter uh, to mix with. You don't want a bad milker. So, I mean, on your journey with these animals, there is just so much uh, you have to, to uh, consider and you have to be able to let them go. If you can see that it's just, um, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just not, uh, it's costing you money to have the animals and they're just not really benefiting you. But hopefully I'll just keep her and just love her for the rest of her life. We'll see what happens. But she will be very, very easy to handle for sure. So the next calves I have, all the female ones, I'll just have them really close to me because that's going to make life much, much easier. And also just feeling their love. It's just, I mean, you get the milk and the meat and everything, but you also get these beautiful animals. Um, you, you get their, their uh, their friendship and it's really really special so <laughs> they want to be in the picture and they want to be they want to be together yeah do so sit do so sit do so sit yeah do so sit yeah do so tidy so this was a little bit about adapting to <laughs> other conditions and how it can be challenging but also very uh, it's very beautiful to have these animals so see you my friend